this is Pete Burns of Dead or Alive, and this is our new album, My Bad and Dangerous to Know. The reason that people try to say that dance music is dead, the people who usually say things like that are the blasé people who are sick and tired of going to nightclubs, really. I think that music that started in the clubs is constantly finding a new audience because clubs always have new audiences and there's a whole generation of kids out there who can't go to clubs so when they hear it, it's a new sound to them. We've never really thought about being in the mainstream. No, no matter what happened to me or what, what might, might happen in the future, be it bankruptcy or, or debt as prison, I would still want to make dance music. It's, it's what amuses me, even if I had to take a job and do it part-time, I actually like to make dance music. I also think that we're, we're really very good at fusing dance with with a pop sensibility. I, I absolutely loathe ballads. Not when other people perform them, but I'm just not that kind of person that can be falsely dramatic. And I think uh, people who write ballads must be either amazingly uninhibited or good liars. Because I don't think anybody really wants to put their feelings out in public in a ballad. And anyway, somebody like me hasn't got anything to ballad about. I'm quite a happy person, you know. So. I find ballads depressing. When they come on the radio, I turn the radio off. But that's not to say they're a highly crafted form of pop music. They're just something that I would never wish to do. And occasionally we write a selection of songs, and just by accident, there is a ballad in there, just for our own amusement. And I think, oh, God, no, everyone's going to want us to put a ballad out. So we scrap it or wipe the tape in the studio with a magnet. You know, we're so paranoid about anybody ever getting their hands on anything like that, because... I think that, that we'd be almost over then, because that, a ballad is more universal to people than, say, a hard dance number, so it would sell more units, more people would want a ballad, which would mean that every single time you made a record, people would be looking for a follow-up to a ballad, and sometimes we do songs and maybe there's a ballad among them, and I hear it and I think, God, this is so commercial, this, this is going to sell millions, and I think, but everywhere I go in life, I'm going to have to face up to this, so we scrap it. I just loathe them. I really loathe them. I think if you put a radio on, it's maybe if you're doing the housework or you're, I don't know, you're just sitting in the house. You want things that make you feel up and energetic. And personally, ballads just absolutely knock me to sleep. I look at a lot of other people's work and I think it's very good. But everything that, that I write has to be suitable for me. I would not have liked to have written yesterday because that wouldn't have been suitable. Yesterday, oh, my trouble seems so far away. I mean, God, you know, who's the, yeah, I'm, I'm still so young who's thinking about yesterday. Our next record is um, I'll Save You All My Kisses. And really the inspiration for this song has come from records that I probably heard when I was a kid. Um, records like, uh, I think it was called Sugar Pie Honey Bunch. I don't even know who it was by. And um, a lot of bouncy Tamla records that I heard as a kid because I had an older brother that used to play a lot of music like that around the house. And I find now listening back to a lot of old records from like, say 1963 64 when i was actually too young to operate a record player but i'd hear them i now often buy those records for nostalgic reasons and listen to them and i can often see a lot of my influences in them that song is really just my interpretation of a bit of nostalgia for records from that era of tamla beat records i'll save you all my kisses